Aliens. Believe in aliens. Ron, believe in aliens. You did it. Hear what he said? He said they're demons. Devils. Amen. 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 All right, y'all are dismissed. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Hebrews 11. Turn your Bible there. Hebrews 11. Well, that's good singing. Yeah. I like that kind of singing, man. I like that kind of music. and I'm not kidding you. Lisa will tell you. She'll come in the house. And she'll hear me back in my room with my speakers real loud playing piano to, uh, how you doing Antonio, you were preaching this morning? Come on, help me out buddy. Southern Ray's got a rendition of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony to bluegrass style. And I mean, she gets that fiddle, and boy, I mean, she just... And so I decided to pick out a piano part for it. And I'm getting pretty good at it. I have to tell you, I'm getting pretty good at it. So when they get here, they are know it. I've already told them. They're playing Beethoven's Fifth with a piano player. And Lisa comes in the house and she hears me with them. I got it blaring just loud. Speakers. So I'm playing with their track and I'm picking out know, parts for and everything like that. I don't know if she just comes in the house, rolls her eyes, and shuts the door for me. I don't know. But anyway, I wouldn't blame her if she did. Hebrews chapter 11. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. Appreciate your prayers this morning. Pray for God's men all over the world. They're standing like uh, Ezra did behind a pulpit of wood with the word in his hand. They open the book, God's people, reverence the book, and say amen. Even at the old, that, that amazed me. You read, you read that story. Ezra stood there with a, with a copy of the book in his hand. And the Bible says as he opened the book, they said amen. He didn't even read it. They, they just had that much thrill at finding hearing the Word of God. We take it for granted. We have Bibles with us every day. In their day, they hadn't heard it for years. They had starved for the Word of God. We've got Bibles. I don't know about you, but i got a Bible everywhere I turn. I, got a, I mean a physical Bible. I've got a Bible here. i got a Bible. One up here, one up here, one up there. I got several at home. I got it on my phone. I got it on my tablet, on my computer. Got Bibles everywhere and we don't read them. And at the opening of the book of God, they stood and they said, Amen. Hebrews 11. I'm thinking I'm going to go easy on you today or maybe you're going to go easy on me. I've only got four slides to go through today. So that should only take an hour and a half, all right? But I just had this in my mind, uh, laying in bed yesterday, and I just want to run this by, and I appreciate your long-suffering with me, all right? Hebrews 11, verse 32, let's start there and get the gist of it, all right? What more shall I say? Or what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak. That is not Barack Obama. He's not in the Bible. Of Samson and of Jephthah. Of David also, and Samuel, the prophet. See, Hebrews 11 is that faith hold fame. These people had faith. They trusted God. Verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. How many of you have ever had a lion after you? I mean a spiritual one. Gaping mouth, big gaping mouth wanting to devour you. You know how to stop them? Faith. You say, oh, it's got to be, it's got to be more complicated than that. No, it isn't. They did it. They did it through faith. And they didn't have the whole Bible like we have. They only had a piece of it. What does that tell you? You got the whole Bible in front of you to believe. To stop lion's mouth. To have righteousness in your life. 
Verse 34. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we're made strong. Think about that. Waxed valiant in fight. Turn to flight. Here it is now. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. You should think about what that word means. Okay? Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. Are you listening to that? Not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. I've got a better life awaiting me on the other side of this life. I'll take it. I will not accept my best life now. If the Lord drags me through pain, suffering, torment, torture, whatever. It sounds like big words now. I'm trying to act big. I'm telling you, I'm just as scaredy cat as everybody else is. I know what God said. And I trust what God said. I believe what God said. I don't have anything else but what God said. Jesus turned to his disciples after that. Everybody else left. Will you also go? And Peter said, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Who else can go? And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourges. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. Look at your Bible. This world is not worthy of the glory in Jesus Christ in your life. Somebody say amen. This world is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise... God having provided some better thing for us that they, without us, should not be made perfect. You know what Elijah, you know what Elisha and, and uh, Moses and all those guys, you know what those guys are waiting on? Waiting on us. They're waiting on us. The dead in Christ are going to rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. They're waiting on us. Their glory has not come yet. They're waiting on us. And these are the people, they've, they've waited all this time for their glory to appear. The glory that they look to. The glory that they want. The good days that they never had. And wish they had. At the end of their life, to them, it was not a disgrace. It was worth it. Are you listening to the preacher today? And I'm up here. It's not my job to tell you how everything in your life is going to go your way. We're not, God's not raising spoiled brat children to get everything their way all the time. But God does love the children that He's raising. And has He not given us good things? Amen? <clears throat> he said, where is that verse? 34? Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot of things. We'll talk about it. I'll let you out of here, all right? Heavenly Father, Lord, I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your help. I'm, Lord, I'm not complaining. I'm thankful, dear God, for all that you've given me, all that you've blessed me with. All the great and precious promises that I have. Thank you for my wife. Lord, I would not be here today. I would not be here today without her. I thank you for her. I pray, God, that you would crown her with glory and bless her. Lord, she's not in the front of the church. She's not trying to run the show. You've blessed her, Lord, in my life, and I thank you for it. I thank you for these people that are here. These are my friends. Some of them are my very best friends. Some of them, Lord God, they, they know me. And they love me. And I thank you for it. Thank you for my family, my girls and my boys, and all my children, grandchildren. 
in-laws. Lord, I thank you for them. They're just a blessing to me. Thank you, Lord, for these folks that are just gracious enough to join with us and worship with us and help us out in the work that you've given us to do. Thank you for Kenya and thank you, Lord, for the ministry that you've given us there. Lord, help us to reach souls and preach the gospel and do the work, God. And Lord, when it's all said and done, then call us home. And Father, we come here this morning. We got, I can see it, Lord. I can see it in the faces of people sitting in this room. That happiness has been driven from them. The joy has gone out. And they don't know what to do. Lord, give them faith. Help them, dear God, as they open up that book and read it. God, that they'll just believe it. And Father, while the evil spirits tell them one thing, it's all lie, it's not for them, they don't deserve it. It's not, that's, that's for somebody else that's better than they are. God, while the devil tells them that, you tell them, Lord, in that still small voice, no, this is my promise to you. You're my child, and I love you. So Father, just give your people grace and give them faith, God, and save them through that. Bless and honor your word, Father. Bless your servant today, Lord, to help him. Through my weakness, God, would you be made strong to these people. Lord, help me to preach this, dear God. Help me, dear God, to accept it, receive it, apply it, Lord, in my life. Help these others, Lord God, have application in their life of who the aliens that have invaded are, where they are. Help us, dear God, through faith to turn them to flight, make them leave. Lord, bless this church. I love it. Love these people. Lord, fill them with your goodness. We pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Who are the aliens? Who are the aliens? I want to. I want to ask. I want to just kind of go around the room here a little bit. I haven't done this in a long time. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. If you go and get a copy of our software, a Bible search software, PureBibleSearch.com, it has attached to it a Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now, why Webster's 1828 Dictionary? That is Noel Webster. When he put that dictionary together, man, that guy was a wordsmith. I mean, he knew words. But he knew that the English language, you listen to me now, this is how God worked history out. He knew that the English language was forever tied to the 1611 King James Bible. And he knew that the only proper way to define English words was by way of the scriptures. And he often used scriptures... Because people were familiar with Scripture. He often used Scripture to define words in English. Here's what he said. Foreign. Not belonging to the same country. Land or government. Belonging to who is... Belonging to one who is not a citizen. Estranged. Foreign. Not allied. Oh, watch this. Adverse to. You think about this. As principles or principles alien from our religion. There are certain things that do not match up with what we believe in the Bible. You know what those are? Those are alien things. You know what that, you know what that means? They don't belong in our religion. That's what that means. As it is, as that's how it's applied like as an ad adjective. As a noun, it means a foreigner. One born in or belonging to another country. One who is not a citizen or a denizen or entitled to the privileges of a citizen. Listen to me. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. There are people in our country who, if they came in here legally, then they are under the constitutional laws of our country and we bless them. Amen. If they are in here illegally, they should not get a driver's license, a voting card, a marijuana card, government pension, government welfare, a free ride. They should not get a uh, sanctuary city in this country. 
There's an article on Drudge this morning. I just pulled it up. That Portland, one of them stupid sanctuary citizens, uh, cities, had an illegal man from Mexico. We've run him out of our country 20 times. They let him back in, let him live in Portland. He was up on felony charges. The jail let him out and he raped an old woman. They shouldn't be here. Amen. You call me a racist if you want to. You want to come here? Come here the right way. Amen. By the way, that's Bible. You want to go to heaven? Get your papers in order. Amen. Do it by the book, by the law. That's, that's what I'm getting at. We've got aliens. We've got things that do not belong. Now that's Webster's 1828 Dictionary. That was a long time ago. Here's Mike Hoggard's simplified 2017 definition. Things that do not belong in the place where they are. All right. I want you to start thinking. Okay? And don't hold back, all right? You're going to help me preach today. Because I'm weak in the knees. I want to lay down. But I've got it in my mind that there are things in our life that are there that are alien. Meaning they don't belong there. Meaning they are adverse. Let me just ask you, who wants to go to heaven? Amen. Aliens will keep you from it. The aliens are adverse to you going. They will stop at nothing to keep you from going. So why are they there? Why are they there? <coughs> they are doing the devil's work. Give me some aliens. Name some of them. Help me out. Or you want me to do it? Because I might infringe on an alien in your life. Go ahead, I saw a hand up. Alcohol is an alien. Tell them, Roy. You know what I know about Roy? Every morning. Hey Roy, can we come in? Am I right? I don't even want to know who has that alien. But I know God already knows where all the aliens are. You mean other? Listen, if I'm not comfortable today, you're not going to be comfortable either. You mean other? Huh? Tobacco. Tobacco does not belong in your lungs. It doesn't. Firemen go into a house wearing a mask so they don't breathe what? And you would say, what's well, because it doesn't taste good? It's like the old boy said, yeah, preacher, I'm against that cigarette smoking. He might burn something, taste this good, it's got to be a sin. Give me a kiss. <laughs> I belong in there. Amen. <laughs> now, you're looking at a guy. I do not believe cigarette sucking is a sin in the Bible. I don't see it in the Bible. But smoke doesn't belong in your lungs. 
My brother-in-law is in heaven today because he put too much smoke in his lungs. And he should be sitting here today with his family, and he's not because he sucked in too much smoke. It's just, that's not Bible preaching. That's just common sense, no nonsense. Find a way to lay it down. Walk away from it like my mama did. It took her years. It took Jimmy Carmichael a long time, but he finally did it. God helped him. Thank you. Somebody, this, listen. We're here in church. Go ahead. Pills and drugs. <laughs> Pharmacy ones. Right? Some of them belong. Some of them don't. It depends on who you are. They're aliens. And they're not right. Go ahead, Antonio. The internet! I don't want to know what your browser history is. I don't want to know who you're chatting with. But I promise you, God knows it. And He might just let everybody find it out. You know what I found out about this world? There was an article that came out last year and it said that more than likely, you know how this, uh, these hackers hack into these websites and pull all the data out of them? They said more than likely, hackers will get into these porn sites and find out your IP address, which is your internet address, and post it online somewhere, post that you've been watching porn. You know what everybody wrote in under the comments? So what? And a lot of them actually listed their sites, their favorite sites that they went to. And I'm going, what a world we live in where most of the people in this world does not care about everybody knowing where they go on the internet. God does. They're aliens. And they don't belong there. That's an encroachment into your mind, through your eyes, and into your marriage. It's what turns normal men into predators. It turns normal women into whores. And it'll do it very quickly. Who else? That's good. Go ahead. The theory of evolution is an alien in the church of God does not belong here. God made us in six days. Actually made us in a split second. Amen. Six thousand years ago, He made the universe in six days. Believe it or not. Amen. The theory of evolution does not. It is an alien idea. It is adverse. By the definition that Webster gave, it is adverse to this Christian faith. Amen. Quit believing it. Quit believing what all these people are saying. It wasn't 15 million years ago. Okay? Somebody else. Huh? False Bibles. But you look around you. You look around this church. How many NIVs are in this church house? Okay? Now, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't read from them. I don't study from them unless I'm going to expose them. Okay? But they, they're, I'm going to tell you something. When I, when I first got into prophecy in, two, in not 2008, 1997, I'd read something in the Bible and then I'd, I'd say, boy, I don't understand that. And I'd look in the NIV. And the Spirit, the Spirit of God was already working in me and I'd read it and I'm going... That don't satisfy me. That does not sound right. It does not soothe my... It does not... It does not help me. God was showing me even then that it didn't belong in the way I think. What's my motto? Anybody know? What's my motto? Think Bible. Think the right Bible. That's good. I'm going to let y'all preach next Sunday. 
Who else? Go ahead. Your pride. Your pride. Your ego. Your way of doing things. Your thinking. What? Listen to me. Everybody listen. You know where the first and quickest exit for pride is? Megan, remember that 32T? Right? And this thing right here? Did you study the scriptures on that? Tongue. That's your homework today. Study the tongue in the Bible. It can be used for good and very good, like I'm trying to now. Or it can be used for very, very evil, evil things. But the fastest, quickest exit of pride out of your mind is through your mouth. Because you think that everybody deserves to hear what you've got to say. Who do you think you are? That's alien. That's good. Somebody else. Go ahead, Todd. Most amusing. Most music. And we have church people that go to rock concerts, country music bar concerts, hip hop concerts, rap concerts. I shouldn't say concert with rap. Rap's not music. Rap is like. That hurt. <laughs> uh, let me give you a biblical example. Turn to 1 Samuel. Chapter 17. 1 Samuel 17. It's good today, amen? It's a help us. It's a help us think. I need it. Listen. I like worldly music. I like worldly music. My flesh craves it sometimes. And then I start thinking about, Jody, what all them 70s songs was about. Are you kidding me? Afternoon delight? It's wicked. It's wicked. What that song's about. And this sounds like it belongs to a milk commercial. But it's wicked. And it's worse now. Let me, sh let, me give you a, let me give you a biblical example of this. 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. They gathered together at Shoko, which belongeth to who? Now, you look at your Bible. The Philistines belonged in Philistia. The Judahites belonged in Judah. So the Philistines belonging, Philistines gathered together in Shoko. And the Bible makes you look at that phrase, which belongeth to Judah. Ian, that jumped out at me one time ten years ago, and I never forgot it. That belongs to Judah. Does that belong to the Philistines? What are they doing there? And they were pitched in there. They were encamped in there. They weren't just like sneaking in. They had built an encampment in there. And they stayed there. And nobody could run them out. Nobody could. It just took one guy. Guess who that guy is? David here, but Jesus here. Because I'm telling you, for the most part, we are weak and powerless against those who encroach in our lives. You did not mention certain family members that you pretty much should not be around. Well, they're family. So, they're going to hell. You're going to be family with them in hell? Certain friends. 
You should not be. They're alien. They're alien to your faith. They're alien to what you're trying to do. They're alien to your cause. They are in a place where they don't belong. And they're telling you, oh, you, you, oh, you do this, you do that, you do this. They're influencing you. Clean out your friends list. Get rid of those people. Clean them out. They don't belong there. And if you find that you are weak to do that, then you call on the strong and mighty one who isn't. And he'll run them out. He certainly will. Right, Jared? Your friends? Where'd they all go, Jared? Jesus run them all for him. Jared, we're coming over. Bringing beer. Jared said, we don't drink beer no more. All right, we're bringing whiskey then. I don't drink that either. Well, we're busy. And that's where they need to stay. I'm not saying don't love them. I'm not saying don't pray for them. I'm not saying don't try to evangelize them. But if they are in your circle of influence, they need to go. Because they will tell you things that are not right. They'll counsel you on issues that are not right with God. Uh, political websites. Political ideas that are not right with the Bible. They don't, they're, they're alien. Socialism is not an American justice system. It is not... We're not here to make everybody equal. We're here to let everybody live in liberty, not force <coughs> communism. That's my two minute I love America speech. But that's, that's just that one verse. It's all I wanted you to look at in 1 Samuel 17. The armies of the Philistines gathered together at Shoko, which belonged to Judah. They were in a place where they did not belong. And it took David to run them all out. Once he got rid of their champion, they took off and fled. Did you know that's how that works? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And when all the other devils see the devil running, they're going to chase after him. They're going, well, he's running. I'm running too. I don't know what's going on, but I ain't getting it. Okay? I got one more verse. Ephesians 2. Turn there. Guess who the aliens really are? Scotty. Guess who the aliens really are? It's us. We don't belong here. Amen. Ephesians 2.12 That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, but having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. You see, at one time, we didn't belong. Listen to me now. At one time, we didn't belong in church. Right? Now we do. But see, now we don't belong here in this world. Now we are being seen as the aliens. The, the, the strangers, the people who are adverse to this new America and this new society that we live in. We don't belong here. And I'm getting more and more of that feeling every day that goes on. So you know what? I, I'm just the kind of type, my wife will tell you, this is just one of my, I don't know if it's good or bad, but if I get the sense you don't want to be around me, I just don't force the issue. I'm out. I'm out fairly easily, but I'm out. And that's sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not good. Because sometimes I think it and it's not true, and I'm out. <coughs> this world starts giving me the idea that it don't want me around. I'll be saying, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus, get me out of here. I don't belong here anymore. I want out. Okay? That's my alien message. So, I want us to pray. And, uh, boy, you guys, you guys really helped me today. Man, I appreciate it. I think we covered a lot of, a lot of issues. And I think everybody here probably is on the same page. 
So let, let's just do this. Just, just between you and the Lord. Who's got aliens? Cockroaches. Call them what you want. I thought so. I think that's why God laid it on my heart. Let's ask King David. Ezekiel 37 calls Jesus David. Okay? Let's ask King David to come, step forward, and run the aliens off. Because they're going to kill us. I love this country, and I love its... I love the fact that we have Chinese, American, Japanese, Spanish, Italian restaurants in America. Amen? You know why that is? Because we got Chinese, Japanese, Italian, Spanish people in America. And a few German. So I don't mind people coming to this country and bringing some of their stuff. I don't mind it. But this is America. And I don't think people ought to be here without it being right and agreeing that this is our country first. And this is our way. That's, that's alien to us and we don't want it. And it's the same thing in your life, people. Same thing. Father in heaven, what a, what a simple idea. Simple word. That your word's got power in it. And Lord, it's by faith that David put the aliens to flight. They were there in Shoko and it didn't belong to them. It belonged to Judah. You gave it to Judah. It didn't belong to them. And Lord, there are things in me that do not belong there. I'm not above these people. I'm not better than they are. You did not make me that way. So Lord, let Jesus stand and put the aliens to flight. Because too many times I'm powerless. Help my family. Lord, they've got aliens. And often they're powerless. I know it. I see it. And I'm asking Jesus to come in their life and stand up for them and run them off. And in this church, the aliens, they're too powerful. They've already been here tried to hurt people. And I hate it. I hate them. I hate the aliens. I hate these devils. I hate spirits. I hate her own stinking pride. God, I hate it. Make them leave. Run them off. Get them out of here. God, help this church. God, help this country. God, help give us leaders that will stand and protect our borders. Give us leaders in our churches that will stand in the gap and protect the churches. Give us homes where godly men and godly women will stand and protect their home from aliens trying to get at their children. God, just help us today. We're powerless against them. And we need Jesus, King Jesus, to rise up and put the aliens to flight. Father, we trust you that you'll do that in our life. Lord, I get called by people who tell me things. They tell me, God, that they have some real problems, real issues. And it's an alien-based issue. There's things in their life that does not belong there because they want to go to heaven. Father, teach them and show them that Jesus will rise in due season and put to flight the armies of the aliens. And that, Father... This world really is not our home. We are foreigners and strangers here. We don't belong. This world is not our home. Heaven is. 
God, be glorified in us today. Be sanctified in our midst. Honor and bless your word. Apply it in our life. Give us help today in our time of need. We pray this in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Are you glad you came to the house of the Lord today? Say Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. Be dismissed. Word of prayer. I love you. Love you people. Thank God for you. Amen, army. Lead us in prayer. Yeah, who uh lead us in prayer, buddy.